Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence. How you doing? I'm so grateful to have you on board. Thank you very much for tuning in and catching this. Today we have an exciting band who are on the way to town. It is not their first appearance when they roll through and hit Honolulu. Boston area band signed and sealed in blood as the record. And you may know them from their song being in movies like The Departed. Uh, you may know them from seeing them on TV doing some glorious hometown gigs, getting to play with on the same stage with some of the biggest Boston area bands, and then some legendary folks like Springsteen, too, who have found uh, a place in in his heart for these guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them in person myself when they get through town. It's been a long time since back in Boston's first big tour. I remember when I still lived in Boston, and these guys were part of that. It was coming up on like 15 years ago or something. It's a pleasure to welcome from the Dropkick Murphys, their drummer and member since that same year of 97, Matt Kelly. Aloha. Mahalo, brother Matt. Hey, what's happening, man? How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. How about yourself? How's everything on your end? Yeah, well... Well, we're in, uh, we're in North Carolina, in Charlotte. Going to be doing a gig here tonight. Uh, and you have uh, a good memory and uh, have done your research. I have been in the band since 97, and that was the Boston's tour. Uh, the Boston on the Road tour. I remember so, it well. Uh, it was a blast. I mean, those guys did a lot for us. I mean, we didn't even have an LPO, and they took us out on a two-month U.S. tour and a one-month uh, European tour and at the height of their popularity. So kudos to those guys they really did i was, I was going to say i mean that was like the moment for the boss tones as i recall the let's face it record also got them the Lollapalooza summer tour that year um yep. you're right that was sort of the the peak of the band and they had the good sense the um i don't know the respect whatever it would be to include you guys in the way that they did and uh, man just have been growing and growing and growing since then do you still have a relation with dickie and those cats yeah, well, I mean, most of them don't live, most of them, you know, a lot of them moved out to California and stuff, but, uh, you know, we always, you know, we always, they do their hometown throwdown and always come out to see that, and actually Joe, uh, Joe Soroyce, the drummer, his sister lives down the street from me, so actually I've run into him in Southie a couple times, which is pretty, was pretty surprising the first time. Yeah, I mean, those guys, they're great dudes. I, I was uh, young and homeless, and I actually, uh, Dickie and, uh, and Tim Burton actually, uh, got me a room in their apartment in Central Square when uh, I, had, I was basically living in the bands in our uh, practice space in our in our van. So uh, I always be grateful to those guys, you know. Oh, that's huge. And plus Central Square, I mean, just around the corner, you got the good Baba Ganesh and Hummus. <laughs> oh, in the, uh, what's it? Yeah. <laughs> the Middle East. I was working there for a little while, too. Actually, our, tour, our current tour manager, well, our, our tour manager for a long time, Evan Tolman, was my boss there for a long, long time. Dude, that's crazy. Uh, when I was in college, yeah. I used to do sound there uh, on Monday nights a long time ago. They used to do like huh. a world music night. Joseph and the Beal, the owners, I used to know those cats. Yeah, they're good dudes. They, I think they kind of still remember me from when I worked there. <laughs> uh, good dudes, good, good food, and uh, it's a pretty good couple venues in that building, too. Yeah, it's awesome. In the Middle East, still one of the, uh, I mean, I haven't been there in 10 years. It's been since I lived in Boston, but that was like the, the mecca of music in so many ways. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's also, uh, I think the last independent club in, in the Boston area too which uh, I'm always uh, a fan of you know people doing it their own way kind of thing you know when you talk about clubs changing uh, hands and stuff a couple things definitely have changed since uh, since then I remember uh, Harper's Ferry is that now called the Brighton Music Hall is that what that gig is yes yes it is it's actually um, it's it's slightly improved too it's uh, the layout's a little bit better now it's uh, it's always been a cool place but um, it's a pretty Pretty awesome little venue. You know, it's about 500 people. Yeah, yeah, it's a great room. So, so, so many, yeah, man. so many cool, uh, legendary folks in that room, and I know that you have a lot of history in in that place too. Before we get deeper into into your Boston area history, it's not your first time through Hawaii, and I know some of the folks listening probably ventured out and saw you before. What What are your recollections of your previous visits here? Uh, I want to say, the, I think we played this three times. I want to say, and I believe they've all been at the Pipeline. Right, that was it. The last who have um it's always a blast i mean you know we've, i mean for for we uh new englanders uh it's a real treat especially this time of year you know we're gonna be coming through there in uh probably mid-april i want to say so uh you know, a little, little little sun and sand and everything is uh pretty nice so that's where my, my wife and i had our honeymoon on the big island in on oahu and uh we, we always uh well this will be our second time back together there so that's, we're really looking forward to that as a couple but uh, the band, it's, the shows are always great. I mean, the, the crowd's always rabid. Um, it's it's the kind of show we like, just packed, 
you know, crazy, sweaty, tight little place. And uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the venue that we're playing now. Is it the same same as what the pipeline used to be? It's just a different venue now or a different, different uh, name or something? Different venue. Uh, so it's a totally different uh, building. Oh. It's not that far oh. from the other one, but it's a totally different place, the Republic. And it'll be a different sort of sort of uh, vibe in some ways, but in a lot of ways the same. And that brings me to the question. I mean, you say the crowd's rabid. You guys go all over the place. You play in a lot of different different kinds of environments. It, when you get outside of Boston, is it all similar? No. Well, there's definitely. I mean, there's 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 you know different different places, especially just places like Europe in the old world and stuff. Uh, there's a lot. You know, a lot of a lot of countries have a, you know a particular or a lot of regions have a particular uh, character to the people a national character or a, a regional character and you know some parts of say Germany are more intense than other parts of Germany as far as people's reaction and, and their how how much they cut loose or you know we played um, Paris and I, I dare say is probably the greatest gig in Europe we've ever, ever had this last time it was just the crowd saying every word and if they didn't know the words they were singing along to the melody of the, of the vocals and it was just for instance that was just one of the most amazing things and you go to places like belgium and people just come out in throngs just, just thousands and thousands of people and uh you know certain parts of the u.s even like you'll go to um one joint and you know people will react a certain way maybe they'll be a bit more goofy and then, like you know, uh, you drive a few hours, and you come to another venue, and people are more aggressive. You know, it's it's just cool to see. You, you definitely take note of that, and just uh, you just it's interesting uh, from a I guess from a cultural and uh, psychological standpoint, just to see how people react to your the same medium, you know, to the same you know to your music. Uh, so it's 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 uh, it's not just a, a wash. You know, you go to different places. Like, okay, well, this this is probably going to be people are probably going to be like this here. And it turns out, you know, we've been been through these places going on like about fifteen, sixteen years now. And you're usually right. Like, oh, uh, that that place. You know, I'm not saying there's no surprises because there's surprises every night. But you definitely learn that here's how people react here. Like Southern Europe, where people sing along with the, the whistles and bagpipes. And of just the melodies and Northern Europe, people sing along to the lyrics and it, you know just stuff like that. For instance, you know that's cool. No, those are yeah. I mean all kinds of cool insights in, in that. And that's funny because on this tour that you got, uh, Australia is part of of what you're going to be doing when you come to Hawaii. And I was just oh, yeah. I just had the good fortune of seeing four different concerts there. Now, admittedly, they were all oh. like gold concerts, meaning they were older acts, so the audience is going to be like a, a similar sort of demographic at each one. Um, sure. And and who who, uh, who played uh, who played uh, those? The ones that I saw were uh, I saw Barry Gibb, who I'd never seen. Oh, yep. Second one was Cliff Richard, Sir Cliff Richard. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> At the Sydney Opera House. Third one was Ringo Starr's All Star Band, which Damn, was, man. and then finally wrapped it up with Carol King. Um, oh man! Wow, that no kid. Four really yeah. legendary artists, different. But the thing I was thinking of you when you were speaking about the different kinds of reactions that you get. <laughs> you were doing Northern Europe. You were doing Southern. You were doing different parts of the U.S. and painting a really interesting picture. When I, when I was in Australia, everybody was a at the show on time and in their seats waiting, and b they were very very quiet throughout the whole show. So it made me think as you were really? talking. Yeah, I was wondering: Are there ever reserved sort of? Are there any crowds that, that you come across? You're like, wow, they're very conservative here. Uh, well, in a lot of the U.S., you have that. Hmm. Uh, a lot of parts of the U.S., you know, they're very reserved. Uh, you know, you have your big cities where people are very, maybe not reserved, but they're jaded. Right, right. They're you used know, like, to like, it. Hey, impress, impress me, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> whereas, you know, it's funny because you said that about Australia. In Australia, because in Australia, I think for us, the crowd is crazy. Could like, be an age thing there. Same. It could be an age thing, yeah, because, man, I tell you, like, Australia is one of the band's favorite places to be. Uh, one of the, our favorite places to be, like, uh, I think a couple of us are like, you know, if, if, we had to, if we had to move outside of Massachusetts, we'd move to Australia. <laughs> it was bizarre, I know, but... Uh, no, it's not. It's a wonderful place. The people are so yeah, incredibly like sincere. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's like England and Ireland and Scotland with good food and good coffee. And, and good, good weather, weather, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, man, uh, that's a blast. Um, Australia is great. We're looking forward to that. Uh, and then 
Hawaii is going to be great just because, you know, like I said, we have the, the, the one gig there, but it just would be a little bit of time to, to relax with our wives and stuff too. So that'll, we're really looking forward to just, I mean, like, you know, we love Hawaii. It's, it's, beautiful and i mean like i said this time of year you know we've been we've been shoveling snow uh but at the time we have been home it's been mostly shoveling snow and then you know bubble, <laughs> bubbled up so you know that, that's how it is up there my brother that's why i got yeah. out when i could and never went back uh-huh. <laughs> smarter man than me <laughs> Talk about uh, when you first put together uh, the, the song, I guess, that you're, in, I mean, you're known, it depends on who you are, sort of like we're talking about different audiences connect on different things, but I'm shipping up mm-hmm. to Boston is certainly th- uh, something that a large pool of individuals connect with Dropkick Murphys on. Talk about first putting that song together and how it connects to the great Woody Guthrie. Okay, well, we were in Madrid, Spain. Um, we got to a show pretty early and we were backstage and like kind of fiddling around and uh, came up with uh, just the, the the line of <laughs> that that the whistle and banjo line and all that and uh, we sort of made it was sort of an instrumental for for a, a few months and uh, around the same time we had been approached by um, Nora Guthrie which is was Woody Guthrie's daughter uh, she, and she has control over his estate and she her one of her children is a very big fan of ours and she i guess through her 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 her, her child is uh also somewhat of a fan of the band and, and she asked us if we'd like to go through the archives of his unpublished stuff and see if there's anything that we want you know that we, we we dug and we wanted to maybe use and of course we were awestruck and, and you know felt you know honored to even be asked to this because people like you know Springsteen and Elvis Costello and, and many other people uh, have been after those things for years and she, we, we get the, the key to the city so to speak Unreal. and um, so she, we check it out and like this particular a couple of them the song there's going to be a blackout which was about the, the London blackouts in, in World War II the title track of an album a few a few of our albums ago uh, and then of course I'm shipping up to Boston like Christ sakes it's a song of a Boston obviously we're going to grab that one <laughs> Uh, so, so, you know, it was, uh, you know, the lyrics are very sparse. There's only a few lines, but I, I mean, we, we, it's funny cause at first we played the song live. Um, it had just been put out on a, on a Hellcat records, like compilation, uh, just like an early studio version of it. We played it and after the show, we were like, well, looks like, uh, we won't have to play that song ever again because people just kind of stood there. <laughs> but I think, you know, the song after, after, you know, we, 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 we re-recorded the song for, uh, oh gosh, what album was it? I think it might've been the Warriors Code. I, I really forget, but, uh, it was, I think it was the Warriors Code. Right. And, uh, then after it was released on an album, um, we were asked, you know, through someone by Martin Scorsese, if we could do, if they could use a song in this, the song, this movie about Boston, we saw the treatment of it, looked, didn't look too cornball or anything, and that movie turned out to be great. And the song is used in, in a couple really awesome scenes, one being that big car chase, the real climax of the film. Um, and I think what happened was like people associated, you know, subconsciously associated the song with that part of the movie. It just got really. So it gets really revved up. That between that also and um, former uh, closer for the Boston Red Sox, Jonathan Papelbon was using it as his uh, intro music to the mound and uh, get you know get those type of people fired up. So I think the song kind of like grabbed a lot more mainstream attention because of those two medium mediums uh, media, um, and you know, and then you know, consequently we we've gained a lot more fans from, you know, the, the mainstream than we had before. You know, mostly, you know, people that we would have probably <laughs> fought <laughs> with uh, are now uh, relating to us, which uh, is kind of cool, you know. Um, it's, uh, you know, because we weren't, it was not like we were, you know, very, we were popular, like, for, on an underground scale in, in our own area. But whereas, you know, af- after that song broke and got popular, you know, it became more popular, with, like I said, with the mainstream, and you know, people were like, "Oh yeah, Dropkick Murphy." Yeah, I know them. You know, whereas before, like, what the hell's a Dropkick Murphy? You know? Right. <laughs> now that one blew you up, and like you, you wisely, uh, 
Yeah, you can see a, a line, if you will, a chain where your popularity launched out of being like a Boston area thing to being a United States thing and really the world. Uh, I wonder if guys like Matt Damon, when, when he hears that tune, you know, because like I hear it, you know, it's hard to come up with an anthemic song that fits a yeah. city or a region. And quite frankly, it's hard these days to just come up with a new piece of music that isn't hasn't already been done as most of you. Guys, to death, maybe, right. Yeah. And, and you guys are finding that out. Musicians are all, when I say you guys, all musicians are, you know, they always su- sort of say that theme. It comes back to that. But I wonder if guys like him uh, in particular just find that song to be like a personal connection because i think of like ain't nothing but a house party by the giles band when i hear oh, yeah. that when i hear that's, that that's tune summer. that's boston yeah i mean you just hear it you know that's boston yeah. and like i hear your jam i don't know i like i and you know i, I put it up that's in the cool. same yeah, it's, it's, to even put those two two things in the same uh the same realm is uh that's, that's very that's a compliment i mean jay giles band i think that was kenny's first show when he was a little kid <laughs> our uh bass player and founder of the band yeah, nothing but a house party is a great tune. It's uh, it's an originally originally by an old uh, soul like R and B band. I forget the name. Oh wow! And they were know. and Giles was just covering it. Now you're schooling yeah, me, I my tell, brother. I tell you what, Jay Giles band, uh, they took that. Tune. I mean, it was a pretty cool tune, but they made it into a friggin' anthem. Kind of like I Roadrunner. Mean, That's another one I put yeah. you guys up with. It all. Oh, uh, Jonathan Edwards. Yeah, right? Jonathan Richmond. Uh, or Jonathan Richmond is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Modern Lovers. Yeah, whatever. Modern Lovers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a because uh, when I hear all the and that's that's what I mean. It's difficult to do that, and here you guys are all these years later, and you come up with this jam, and now like kids all over the world are singing it, and and they must that's connect. Funny. Yeah, it is, and then you even got yourself all the way to the Simpsons, the departed episode. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty funny. I know uh, that was that was what the guys in the band were actually a bit more even more psyched about because we were just like almost like weirded out by the by the, the departed thing because uh, literally we stepped off a plane from a European tour and like I guess the premiere was that night so went like picked up our girlfriends and wives and went to the went to the movie theater and just sitting there like completely blasted out from, from traveling and jet lag and all that and the song came on in the movie like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know just, it was just like we, we just couldn't even fathom what was going on because we were just just you know, tour tour tired and and jet lagged, and we were just at the movie theater, and like we didn't you, you didn't even know where you were. Basically, you're on you know, on Queer Street as they call it, and uh, just completely blah, you know, and uh, so like and then you see in The Simpsons, you know, like the 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 strangest and novelty had worn off from the Departed thing for us, and then like like The Simpsons, like that's freaking awesome. You know, we did a song in The Simpsons because uh, I mean, some of the guys in the band are, are hardcore Simpsons fanatics, and you know basically almost look like characters from said uh, cartoon <laughs> so it was a big that was a, that was a really big deal for us <laughs> It's super cool, man. Super yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I wonder how that ranks to playing with Springsteen and Aerosmith at different points in Boston. Is it? I mean, where where does it rank compared to those achievements? Oh, I think it's a different thing. I mean, like the, nothing compares to playing with a, you know playing live. So you know, I mean, like you know, movies and cartoons. You know, is as important as they are, you know, I don't know how important they are culturally or whatever, but, uh, you know, they, they, they great things for us, but I think as far as like real deal stuff and the things that are actually, actually cool and important, I'm playing, you know, playing Aerosmith asking us to play with them and then them and their crew treating us like amazingly total like champs as far as, uh, you know, they're people taking care of our people and, 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 and the band accommodating our band and, you know, having the guys come up and, and you know, like four, I think four of the guys, four of our guys came up and, and played uh, Love That Dirty Water by the uh, Standells and uh, on stage at, 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 at um, Twitter at the, Center. Uh, Comcast Center. Right. Yeah, well, yeah that's right. you can't keep up with the name. They keep changing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that and then having having the boss come up and singing Pegging My Heart and doing Badlands and uh, and I'm shipping up to Boston with us at the at the at the House of Blues. I mean, those are that's some big stuff, man. I, I don't know if what can top that. I mean, maybe if um, Angus Young came out and played with us, uh, <laughs> I'd be I'd be crying like a schoolgirl. But uh, you know, the, these these are the things that matter. You know, because plus also, I mean other people could enjoy it as well. You know, the audience is there and they, they could take it in and, you know, it wasn't just, you know, 
it wasn't just uh, you know us patting ourselves on the back. It wasn't just our song being something cool. It was it was them being there in the moment and being able to share that with the band or the bands. You know, so that was those two things. Are, that's that's the real special stuff right there. Yeah, man. Oh, well, that's uh, must have been cool. Did, did Bruce come up to your dressing room at the House of Blues and hang? Or oh yeah, I introduced him to my my uncle. Who uh, my uncle saw him for the first time at Harvard Square Theater in 1975 when he was just uh, just coming up, and uh, he had never met him before. He's been to see him like 50, 60 times, and he finally met him. My uncle was in tears. It was great. And, oh, wow. uh, and Bruce also signed my dad's one of my dad's best friends' uh, guitar, which had been signed by like Roy Orbison and you know Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf and all you know all these great artists and like he you know had this little etching pen thing he's like you know okay would you mind if you know if it's possible you get bruce to sign that and like uh, i brought him to sign it he's like oh my god is that is that oh, what was that you know he's like he was he was marveling all, all over the 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 uh who wouldn't who wouldn't oh, I, I mean this guitar is killer <laughs> this guy's had this thing for years and years and years um but yeah, he he was hanging backstage. He was really freaking cool. He just came in, um, you know, for sound check, introduced himself to you know people people around and stuff, and uh, really cool, really down to earth. Um, he's one of those like big rock stars that's actually doesn't act like a rock star. No security, you know? no entourage, all by himself. I did a couple too. Well, I mean, Max Weinberg came in. Okay. Um, Look at you, man. But, uh, oh, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I mean, my, I wish my dad had been there when he was there because my my dad's a big my dad's a drummer and a big Max Weinberg fan. Um, but yeah, totally Springsteen, totally cool. Um, just a, a gent, you know. He took time, you know, took time to talk to people and stuff like that. He wasn't like in and out of there, you know. He was just really hanging and just seemed very comfortable being there. Uh, you guys are very comfortable sort of cats. I mean, just talking to you, I can see why he'd want to hang there all night. Um, no question. Hey, I could talk. I could talk if we can bore him to tears. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and and as a as I go to wrap it up with you, first ever headliner at the Garden is coming up soon, right? That'll be like yeah. this, this month. It's not the real Garden, but, but it's what we got left. No. There's no urine troughs. No urinal troughs anymore. There's actual urinals, and uh, there's the, the the balcony's not hanging over the ice anymore but um yeah it's, it's cool it's, it's actually you know what there's not a bad seat in the house in the new garden so bro i've been in there a bunch when they called it the fleet center i remember when they opened oh, it yeah. they called it the fleecing center i remember on bcn at first <laughs> yeah all well, the beers are like now eight bucks or something They're are they the, oh yeah and which but, uh, no that should be that should be pretty damn cool um they have it set up so i think the capacity is gonna be about twelve thousand five hundred. um because you know stage and all all that stuff takes up so much room but uh it should be a freaking blast. I mean, uh, you know, it's definitely something different, something strange, something new for us. Um, the play, you know, it's you know, like you said, it's not the real garden, but it's on the hallowed grounds that once held the original Boston Garden. Yeah, it's next door and to it, know, at least. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, close enough. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, that's going to be a blast, you know. Uh, that weekend, we're doing that on Friday. On the Saturday, we're playing Brighton Music Hall, as we talked about earlier. Um, which is going to be that's going to be a, a lot of fun. Right? We're going we're going to attempt to do the whole ga- uh, the Gangs All Here album, nice. start to finish, plus more. And uh, and then on Sunday we're playing the House of Blues. Um, so it's going to be a fun um, a fun weekend of three very different sort of gigs. Kind of Boston's ish um, in the hometown throwdown ish kind of way. In a, in a yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Well, those guys are the, those guys definitely tear it up every uh, every New Year's ish time. They're 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 a blast, man. Yeah, no, well, it's very, very, uh, you know, for all the Boston folks, I think a lot of people are extremely proud of you. And uh, I just leave you with one final question. I'm also a drummer, so I always have to ask. Oh. I'll tell you my two favorites if you'll tell me your two favorite drummers. Sure, my two favorites. Yep. Well, first and foremost, uh, Bonzo. Dude. John, John, John Bonham. Look at I know. My, <laughs> mine and my dad's favorite drummers, drummer. Uh, then, and I tell you what, number two would be tough because I have like a small pantheon of favorite drummers. Uh, but number two, I'd have to say it's a cross, a three-way tie. I, I, that's so cheesy. I know. Four, I'm sorry. Five-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst, I realize. Uh, between uh, Nico McBrain, Clive Burr, both uh, Maiden. Maiden, Iron Maiden drummers. Yeah. Um, Ginger Baker from Cream. Mm-hmm. Um, Keith Moon. Oh. No explanation necessary. And uh, Mitch Mitchell from uh, Hendrix. Dude. Uh, experience. Bunch of savages. And, uh, and honorable mention, honorable mention, Phil Rudd from ACDC. Oh, wow. Because the guy's a human metronome. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, he's very Ringo-ish in his uh Yeah, in his but playing. I tell you what, that guy yeah, lays man. it down, man. Like, just 
just I mean I have so I AC DC is my favorite band of all time and I just hearing all the different bootlegs and live stuff, the guy just is just a metronome. He's just in the he's in the, in the pocket. biggest pocket that's ever been made. Yeah, man. he's in the pocket of Elton John's uh Elton John's pants from uh, from from Tommy when he's wearing the giant Doc Martin <laughs> giant pants. That's a big pocket. So a huge my question pocket. to you is who are your who are your two favorite drums? Well, you stole all my thunder with Bonzo because, John- uh, but that that's just he's just. <sighs> The greatest. He has so much rhythm and so much. I mean, he's like more rhythm and soul for for a non funk drummer than anybody else who's who's ever existed. So I just, I of course, John Bonham is uh, always number one on my list. But number two, you didn't mention. I was getting kind of worried you might because you had such a diverse array. But thankfully, you saved me from total despair. And uh, Co- Cozy Powell would be my other favorite. Oh yeah, man, awesome. <laughs> Cozy Powell is awesome. Kind of like John That's with that. two feet. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's up there, like him and like Carmen Apice and all those guys, like like killer, like uh, Cozy Powell. I actually have a single of his. What's the goddamn dance with the devil? So- no, no, no. It's probably it's like from the kind of the glam era, like mid seventies. Was a really great tune, man. Ah, uh, oh, jeez, I can see the cover, but I can't remember the tune. Uh, but he like uh, his. He's a good songwriter as well as a good drummer. Yeah, he was. Was, a, was yeah, he was a, a monster. He was just yeah, uh, man. cool, cool drummer, man. Yeah, uh, Cozy Powell, really cool. Um, yeah, that's 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 cool because everybody's talking about these like you know new school dudes like from my generation is like you know we get that's that's there's no there's no we got no there's no soul no rhythm these days you know what I mean those guys could friggin play man those guys I mean they were influenced by jazz drummers and stuff and you know they had they had a really interesting um, set of influences you know like background and they just it was. It was, you know, it was all about feel and, and, you know, those dudes, like, they knew when to do what, mm-hmm. when not to do what, you know? Less like, is that's more. Why, that's what made Bonzo so friggin' good, you know? He was, you know, he knew when to just lay it down, and then he knew when to throw something killer in there that would blow your mind. Since you're a Moon you know? fan, since you're into Keith, yeah. if you if you haven't already become a fan of his, do you know who Zach Starkey is? Oh, of course, yeah. I saw I saw The Who with him a few times and uh, Oasis. Isn't he a badass dude? He's awesome. Love yeah, him. Yeah, Moon, Moon taught him, right? Exactly. I mean, I never got to interview Ringo on this little thing that I just did, but if I ever yeah. do get to meet him, I always would think, like, you know, I don't know whether to ask him to talk about his awesome stuff or just to thank <laughs> him for bringing that boy into the world. I yeah, mean, man, that dude Wales, he really does. Uh, he's, he's tasteful, too, man. I saw him, like I said, I saw him with The Who a couple times, and... Uh, he he doesn't try to be moon, but he you know he I mean? accomplishes but it though. He's he has that that like I don't know that flitty like swing that that moon had without yeah. without the drugs. I think right. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. He like he does the who stuff. Like oh man, he's so 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 good, man. That's all yeah. I can. I just want to high five Ringo so hardcore on that and be like, man, like, never, you, you know what an what an accomplishment, what a gift to the world, giving us yeah, like, that kid. I like your work, dude. Yeah. Oh, thanks. My drumming? No, you're kidding. <laughs> uh, my, my dad always said, uh, speaking of Ringo, that like a lot of the stuff he did sounded very simple, but when you try to actually sit down and play what he did, so it's like, how, how the hell, how do you think to do this? Exactly. You know? Exactly. So he did some really cool stuff, too. He's, he's, he's always overlooked and, in, 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 you know, underrated, I think, um, um, Ringo, but, you know. Fair enough. <laughs> hey, when you come to town, maybe you guys do a little follow up. I'd love to like uh, do another rap. If you have any time while you're in Honolulu, I'll come down to the gig. Or if you guys got some time, I'll have you over yeah. to the studio. We got a really nice studio. It's, it's yeah, man. Possibly the studio would definitely you know come down to gig you one way or another. You know. Yeah. Well, if you, if you're up for it, if you had fun today, I wouldn't mind getting a, getting a little thing together with because you're a lot of fun to talk to. It's uh, it's a great oh, Matt Kelly so. drunk. You caught me in a good mood. <laughs> hey, Matt, I hope you had fun today. I give you a hug, a yeah. high five. I'm very proud of you guys and all the Thanks, stuff man. you've accomplished. I remember seeing you. I was just like a kid working at BCN for Mark Perenno. I barely even <laughs> knew anything about uh, radio compared with now. And, and here you guys are. So I'm very, very well, proud I mean, of you. you. Are. Say again? I said, and here you are. Yeah, man. Well, we, we both survived and went on to do stuff, but very, very proud of you, and I hope you travel safe, have a wonderful tour leading up to here, and I'll reach out to your people. We'll try to do something when you come through town. Dynamite. Thanks a lot, Dave. You have a great one. Uh, you too, brother. Be safe, Matt. See you in a few. Aloha, bro.